it's time to open our service this evening. I'm going to ask Brother Eddie to come up. We're going to go ahead and have the choir come up and get ready to sing while he comes. Well, it's good to be back in God's house again. Um, got a lot to pray about tonight. Uh, let's pray for uh, Brother and Sister Ball for healing in her body and pray for their family. And uh, she also requested we pray for her daughter, Caitlin. I mean, her granddaughter, I'm sorry. And uh, let's continue to pray for our pastor's back. He needs a healing. Uh, let's pray for Brother Patrick's um, healing from cancer in his body. Pray for uh, Sister Betty's brother, James Green. He needs a healing in his body. Let's pray for uh, Nathan and Brianna, and Sister Tina's uh, son and uh, daughter-in-law. Uh, let's pray for Brother Albright's uh, sister-in-law. <clears throat> let's pray for Brother James. He needs a healing in his body. Uh, brother Oliver's daughter, Callie, and granddaughter, Chloe, for their salvation. Uh, Sister Tracy is, uh, needs prayer. Uh, let's pray for Sister Sarah for healing in her body and her children's salvation. And let's continue to pray for the O'Hare family uh, where they lost their loved one. Uh, pray that God will comfort them. Let's pray for Brother Scott's grandmother, Cora. She needs prayer. And uh, pray for Brother Sam and his son. Uh, they both need healing in their bodies. Uh, Brother uh, Woolard's son, Aaron Woolard, he needs prayer. Uh, Sister Blanche requested uh uh, for uh, Charles Chisholm and Peggy Massey and uh, also continue to pray for the uh, Tommy Simpson's family where he passed away um, and also for a uh, little three year old boy Caleb he has all autism and he needs prayer uh, let's pray for Sister Dar Darlene's husband Lawson for healing in his body and uh, most of all his salvation <clears throat> and uh, also pray for her children's salvation and uh, tyranny Continue to pray for Sister Sandra for healing in her body. Uh, pray for Sister Sheila's mom, Christine, for healing in her body. Uh, pray for the youth from our church, uh, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, and Selena. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Floyd and Brother and Sister Shortridge, Brother Mike Woolard. They, not, they all need healing in their bodies. And uh, pray for my co cousin's wife, Tanil. She needs a healing in her body. And uh, pray for Israel. And pray for my kids, uh, Hannah and Cody and Jamie, for their salvation. Does anybody else have a request? Brother Ben? Pray for Brother Benny. He's going to become a hospice volunteer. Anybody else? Oh. Okay, let's pray for uh, Sister Angela's son, Aaron. Uh, she's not seen him for nine days, and uh, he really needs prayer. Anybody else? Pray for Angela, and uh, she has also has a Sister Audrey also has a special request. Anybody else? Yeah. Dorothy Hill. She needs prayer and healing in her body. Okay. God, if that's all, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight, God, asking you to <coughs> heal us tonight, God, just come down and God, just touch us tonight, Lord, God, we need you, we got so much sickness, Lord. Thank you. 
we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's good to be back in God's house again this evening. Luke 15, 10, Jesus said, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. What the Lord did for Brother Eric and um, Brother Clint today, nobody else could have done for him. Let's uh, give him the worship and praise he deserves. The Bible said, as far as he says from the west, God's removed those, those sins from him. If you can travel east until it turns into going west, that's where you'll find their sins at, and you'll never find them. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord in spirit and truth with the choir.
He's a great God, and He wants to be your friend, so be friends with Him. He wants to know you for, his, for Himself. It's good to have Shelby back with us this evening. It's good to have Emily with us this evening. Don't want to forget them. They're part of our church here. They, once you've been more than once, you're part of South Asheboro Church of God. This time we're going to receive our offering for ushers to come. Praise God. Brother Matthew, you asked the Lord bless time to give him. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy. and give it this time Sister Shelton, Sister Harris, Sister Brady are going to come answer this song.
Jesus. There's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Uh, God worked two great miracles in here earlier, and I believe He wants to do more here this evening. So let's keep seeking Him. Let's listen to what the pastor has to say to us this evening. Let's apply it to our lives. This time we're going to hand it to Pastor Brother Shell. Amen. Give Jesus a hand of praise and love. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Amen. If you're saved, you're saved because of Him. Amen. You're not saved because of your works. The Bible said it's not of our works, lest any man should boast. You can't make yourself good enough to get saved. Is that right? But I'm glad through Jesus we can be born again. What a wonderful <clears throat> service we had here this morning. I appreciate Brother Clint rededicating his life to the Lord this morning. I appreciate Eric being saved this morning. I appreciate the, these around these altars seeking God. 
And uh, God's going to baptize Laura with the Holy Ghost. He's going to baptize Denim with the Holy Ghost. For so this whole family going to have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. If you haven't been baptized, you can be baptized tonight. Amen? Amen. Appreciate the hunger. Now listen, don't let time serving God cause you to lose your hunger. We need him more today than we've ever needed him before. We're in perilous times, is that right? And uh, so don't let, don't, let your, don't let yourself become prideful and say, well, I've been serving God 20 years now. I've been serving God 40 years now, 60 years, 100 years now. We need God just as much today, if not more, than when the day we first met him. So let's tarry in these altars and let's seek the face of God and see the great things that God's going to do in our lives. Amen? Appreciate you coming. It's good to have Shelby with us tonight. I understand she was here on Wednesday night. Shelby, thank you for coming back again this evening. She's a nice lady. I just met her before service, but she's very, very nice, very kind. I want you to give her a hand of appreciation for being back with us tonight. Man, I love the Lord, don't you? I could not make it without Him. I could not make it a day without Him. I could not make it an hour without Jesus. See, man, but we're so glad we don't have to. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. If we will walk with him, he'll walk with us. Praise the Lord. We want to stand and get back in the Word of God tonight. We're going to go back to where he was this morning. Had another message prepared, but God just dealt with me uh, right after service. Going to get back and try to finish this out tonight. Hebrews chapter 9. We want to begin reading in verse 12. I'm glad for the day the Lord saved me, sanctified me, He is sanctifying me. There was a time of instantaneous sanctification, but it's also progressive. He's working on me every single day. Is that right? Trying to make me more like his son, and I want to be more like his son. I want to live like Jesus. The Bible shows us, and I've told you before, Jesus showed us his time here on this earth. He showed us not as God how to live, but as a man how to live in this life. He did it the right way, and if we'll follow his footsteps, the Bible said we're to walk even as he walked. If we'll walk in the footsteps of Christ, we'll live a good Christian life, and we'll impact others that are here, that are lost, that need to know Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Hebrews Hebrews chapter 9. Begin reading again in verse 12. The Bible says, Neither by, by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes and an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? If you're comfortable in doing so, would you take somebody by the hand tonight and just pray for them? God knows what their needs and just ask the Lord to help them and to touch them in this service. We're going to come to the altars here in just a little while. I'm not going to try to hold you a long time here. I want to get in these altars and seek God tonight. Father, thank you. We're glad again to be back in your house tonight. Thank you for this beautiful singing, Lord. Thank you for the anointed singing, Jesus. Thank you for the Spirit of God that we feel and can sense in this atmosphere tonight. Thank you for this congregation. These are wonderful people, God, that love you. But I do pray tonight, Lord, if there's one that's lost, one that doesn't know you, that tonight they would leave here changed. Tonight they could leave here with their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray for that great salvation experience, Lord. I pray that you'd touch this piece of clay tonight. Now, Lord, I need your help. Can't preach without you, God. I need that divine touch. I pray, Lord, the preacher will show up and anoint tonight. And, Lord, I pray that this word will find its place in our heart. And, Lord, that we'll not reject it or resist it, but we'll we'll take it in, God. We'll eat of it and we'll grow by it, dear Lord. We pray for the lost around this world. Pray for every lost soul on this earth daily, God, for souls to be saved and lives to be changed, God, but not just saved, but then sanctified, to be set apart from what they were before, Lord, to make a willful choice to separate themselves from sinful things of their past. We pray, God, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Let people be filled full of the Holy Ghost and running over the power of God. 
Pray for healing in this house tonight, God. Heal the sick. And Father, we want to give you the praise and the glory for it all. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody shouted amen. amen. Can you give God one more hand of praise and love tonight as you're seated? I don't want to say this arrogantly, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I told Sister Shelton this afternoon we was getting ready to come to church, and <laughs> this church is a unique church. It's not the only unique church on this earth, not the only good church on this earth. We don't think we're the only ones right down here at South Asheboro. There's still some good churches, some good people that love God. But I told Sister Shelton this afternoon, I said, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to sound arrogant when I say this, but this church has been so blessed with the people that's here that we we don't even have to have an evangelist to come in for revival to have revival around here. Now, we do. We have evangelists come through because we need to hear a different voice from time to time. That's okay. But we have been so blessed to have such wonderful meetings when the church gathers here at South Asheboro. Amen. And I, I appreciate the way that you worship God here. It's more than just a worship, though, more than just a shout here. We have good doctrine, solid biblical doctrine that you live by and you practice that and you walk in that. And it makes a difference in the atmosphere when we come into the house of God. Amen. So we're, we appreciate this church and we love what this church stands for. I appreciate the way this church worships God, the way you seek God around these altars, the way you respond to the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. And uh, I appreciate that we have a, a revival atmosphere in this church. We go through seasons. We go through times. If we didn't, we wouldn't need faith in God. Amen? But I appreciate souls are being saved and people are being sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. I appreciate the fire that burns in here, the river that runs through this place. And we want to thank God for it all. Can you shout amen tonight? Amen. But I'm telling you, this is not a dead church, amen? I'm glad we're not in a dead church. If this was a dead church, I'd be looking for one that had some life in it. Can you say praise the Lord? I want to preach again tonight. On, on Get back on what we've started this morning. Didn't get to finish this. The blessings of his blood. The blessings of his blood. I told you and shared with you this morning that if there is one subject more than any other that Satan would oppose in this day, it is the blood of Jesus Christ. He would love nothing more than to turn our minds away from this truth. He wants everybody in this world to be blinded to the truth uh, of the power of the blood of Jesus to change people's lives. Satan does not mind that we believe that we can be saved by outside of the blood of Jesus. Matter of fact, he encourages that kind of ungodly doctrine, that kind of, kind of ungodly belief uh, that I can be saved just through a reformation. I can be saved through doing good deeds in this life. I can be saved if I have a good moral character or if I can be water baptized. There are some places that teach and preach uh, that you're not saved until you've been baptized in water. There is no Bible that, that supports uh, such doctrine. Can you say amen? He would have us to believe that if we get water baptized, then we're all right. Or if we join the local church and put our membership there, that that's all we need to be saved. He tells us we can be saved just by doing our best. You'll go to heaven just trying to live a good life. As Joel Osteen would say, just live your best life now. Come on, say amen. But the Bible makes it clear to us, uh, amen, that there's only one way to be saved. That is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 26 and verse 28 that his blood is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The Bible's clear. The Bible holds no punches. 
There has to be no confusion here in the minds of people uh, that the blood of Jesus Christ is our only hope uh, to be saved. It's only through the blood of Jesus can my name be written in the Lamb's book of life. It is only through the blood of Jesus that when I breathe my final breath, uh, can I make heaven my eternal home. Uh, Aren't you glad for the blood of the Lamb? Say praise the Lord. I told you this morning we know that if someone loses all their blood from their body, uh, then they will die. Amen. The same thing happens spiritually. If you take the blood out of the gospel, uh, there is no life in the gospel. There's no power in the gospel. There is no saving or salvation uh, in the gospel if you remove the blood of Jesus Christ. So that tells us the blood is essential for salvation. The writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 9 and 22 that without the shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. But then our scriptures here make it clear to us that not just any blood will do. Only the precious blood of Jesus is sufficient to save. It is by the blood of the Lamb of God. It is the blood of that pure, spotless lamb that died on Calvary uh, that saves us and washes us uh, and cleanses us from our sins. I want you to notice here, I shared with you this morning, it is by his blood that we are redeemed. The word redeem means to buy back, to free from what distresses or harms, to free from captivity by payment uh, of ransom. Then the writer said in Hebrews chapter 9 here that we share with you tonight in verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. The sacrifices there in the Old Testament did not have the power to save men from their sins. That blood of animals, that animal sacrifice. They tell me in the Old Testament that millions and millions and millions of animals were sacrificed. Their blood was shed, but it had to be repeated again and again and again because it could not redeem men from their sins. Amen. Their blood, the blood of those animals, it was not sufficient to redeem lost mankind. But I'm glad that God already had a plan before the foundation of the world. I told you this morning uh, that when Adam and Eve sinned in that garden against God and God uh, put them out of that garden because of sin, uh, amen, God wasn't scrambling trying to figure out what he was going to do next. Uh, God already had a plan before he ever created man, uh, before he ever created this world. Uh, God already had a plan uh, to redeem mankind. God knew that we would have to have a perfect sacrifice. Peter said in 1 Peter 1, verses 18 through 20, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things had silver and gold. In other words, there was nothing on this earth that could redeem us. Everything on this earth is corruptible. It's going to pass away. We could not be redeemed by corruptible things. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was for or ordained before the foundation of the world. Before mankind ever sinned, God already had a lamb. Before the world was ever created, God already had a lamb. And his name is Jesus Christ. And his blood still has the power to redeem a fallen mankind. My blessed Lord. Somebody raise your hands and give him praise here tonight. Amen. God didn't get caught off guard. God wasn't surprised by what happened in that garden. God already had a lamb prepared. And it is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He prepared a lamb and provided a lamb in the person of his only begotten Son. John 1 and 29, Brother Scott preached out of this passage of Scripture. I believe it was on Wednesday night. Done a wonderful job. Amen. 
The Bible said the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, amen, this is John speaking of the Son of God. He said, behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. When the time come in the fullness of time, when Jesus would go there to that cross at Calvary, there at Golgotha, and hang on that old rugged cross, there he shed his blood for you, and he shed his blood for me. I've said it before, if I was the only one that could have been redeemed, if I was the only one that could have been saved, he'd have shed his blood just the same. I'm glad for the price that he paid for me. I wasn't worthy to be redeemed, but I'm glad that he shed his blood, that I could be saved, I could be changed, I could have life and have life more abundantly. He suffered greatly on that cross. Give me a little more monitor, please, sister. He poured out his blood for you and me that we could be redeemed, that we could be free. Anybody free here tonight? Anybody remember back in seeing the life of sin, the things that you were bound by, what had such a crippling, a crippling hold on you, what had such a stranglehold on you, you couldn't shake free from it, you couldn't run far enough from it, you, you couldn't get loose of his grip, amen, but then you met Jesus, and when Jesus came into your life, he instantly, immediately let you go free, he redeemed you, he bought you off the auction, block of sin it was not with the corruptible things of this world but it was that pure and holy and righteous blood of the lamb I don't know how you feel tonight but I'm glad to be free I'm glad to be redeemed I'm glad my life has been changed by Jesus Christ hallelujah to God I'm glad I'm not what I used to be I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He man, the price he paid for us. He didn't do it with silver and gold, but he gave his own life. He shed his own blood so that you and I could be free right here tonight. Can you say amen? I told you this morning that if you're going to be free, if you're going to be saved, if you're a backslider, if you're lost, if you're entangled in sin, if you're bound up by the things of this world, it, it breaks my heart, it burdens my heart. I've got family that's bound up in drugs. I've got family that's bound up in perversion. I've got family members bound up in sin and they don't know how to get free. I've watched them down through the years. They don't get better. They get more entangled and more entangled. Deeper and deeper in that pit. That miry clay. That muck and the mire. But I'm glad my friend there's still a Savior. Jesus Christ still has the power through his blood to save to the uttermost most. Uh, he still got the power uh, to bring them up and also out uh, of that horrible pit uh, and that miry clay. Uh, the blood's got the power uh, to set them upon the rock to stay. Uh, the blood's got the power uh, to break the chains and the shackles of sin uh, and loose them uh, and let them go free. Somebody give him praise tonight. Woo! They're not too deep in sin that Jesus can't reach further down. That the blood cannot redeem them from where they are. Allah cannot do that. Muhammad cannot do that. Buddha cannot do that. I'm telling you, these man-made gods of this world, uh, they cannot hear, uh, they cannot see, uh, they cannot save, uh, they cannot redeem. Uh, there's only one Redeemer, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, they sang about it tonight. Uh, I said his name is Jesus. Uh, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, only Jesus uh, can save us from our sins. Oh, has the power to break even the greatest shackles of sin. His blood can pay the price that we might be able to go free. I'm so thankful that I've been blessed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can testify I'm not what I used to be. Thank God. 
because the blood's been applied in my life. And if the blood's been applied in your life, uh, you're not what you used to be either. Can you give him a hand of praise tonight? Hallelujah. By his blood we are redeemed. We're blessed by the blood to be redeemed. Second, it's by his blood that we are cleansed from our sins. The writer said in verses 13 and 14, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit have offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Can you say amen? The word purge means to cleanse and to free from filth. Amen. The Old Testament sacrifices could never completely cleanse people's sins. The blood of those animals, they could only serve as a covering for their sins. But the precious blood of Jesus Christ has the power to do more than just cover our sins. But the blood cleanses our sins. Brother Scott alluded to it in the opening of the service. That blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse our sins. And as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against us again. Can you say amen? He doesn't just cover our sins, but he washes them all away. I said he doesn't just cover them, but he cleanses them. He makes us ever with whole. He makes us clean. Thank you. God for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Woo! He cleanses us. He washes us. I thought about, you know, I, I love to work out in my yard. I don't have any hobbies. I don't, I don't play golf. I don't, I don't hunt. I don't, you know, do anything else. All I do is, you know, work for the kingdom of God. I love to work in my yard. I don't, can't do it like I used to. My back, I, but I love it. I, I, That's what I enjoy doing. It's quiet out there. It's peaceful. And I can talk to the Lord. I, I pray when I mow. I, you know, somebody ride by and see me talking. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to God. I thought about this time. You get out there in the old yard in the summertime and that old heat beating down. Brother Albright, get out there in that, that beautiful garden. You want to see a pretty garden, don't go this year because it's over now. But next year, you wait and see if the Lord tarries. Even the neighborhoods told me how good that garden is. Amen. But you get out there and you get to work and you get dirty and nasty and sweaty. Amen. Come in that house and got all that dirt on you and nasty and all that sweat on you. But then you get in that shower and you get a good shower and you're clean. All that stuff's washed off of you. And you get out and you feel so good. Is that right? You feel better when you got out than when you went in. Amen. Well, that's how it is with the blood of Jesus. In sin, we are filthy. We are dirty. We are unclean. But the blood of Jesus, when he washes us in that blood, it is such a wonderful transformation. It is such a wonderful cleansing that it washes all of my sins away. You listen to me, friend. You may or may not have known me when I was in sin, but I was filthy in that lifestyle. I had a heart that was black with sin, but when Jesus washed me with his blood, though my sins were as scarlet, he washed them, and he made me white as snow. Only the blood of Jesus can and cleanse that sinner's heart and make it wide in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him tonight. <laughs> Woo! Only the blood can do that. Only the blood can cleanse you that way. Only the blood can wash your sins away. Listen, people try to hide their sins. They try to cover their sins up. But you can't go to heaven hiding your sins. You can't go to heaven trying to cover your sins up. But you can be cleansed by this blood of Jesus Christ. And you can go to heaven. I said you can be clean through the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. Revelations 1 and 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead 
and the prince of the kings of the earth <laughs> unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Thank God I've not been washed by the blood of a goat or a bull or a turtle dove or some kind of other animal. Amen. But I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb of glory. It is a spiritual cleansing. Thank God it washes all of my sins away. Amen. Now we've been washed by his blood from our sins. When we're washed in the blood now, we are justified. Justification is that judicial act of God in which God pardons all the sins of those who come to Jesus Christ and are washed by this precious blood. Through justification, we are declared righteous in God's eyes. Now, you listen to me tonight. Doesn't matter what your past may be. Men love to bring up your past. Men love to talk about what you were. The devil certainly loves to bring our past up. The Bible said he's an accuser of the brethren. I'm telling you, through the blood of Jesus, all of our past sins are forgiven. We are no longer guilty. We are declared righteous in the eyes of God Almighty. The Bible said in Romans 8, 1, 8 and 1, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Jesus Christ. You let the world say what they want to say about you. Let the world remind you of your sinful past. But thank God I've been washed by the blood. My sins have been forgiven. I'm cleansed and I'm justified in the eyes of God. Doesn't matter how far in sin you may have gone. Doesn't matter what you got into in sin. Does it matter how black your heart was? How I was deep in sin like some of you. How I was bound by much sin. I had a black heart in sin. But I'm glad I met a man named Jesus. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins. Amen. Some of the best Christians I've ever known was those who had a wretched past. Those who had a wicked past. The Bible said whom forgiven much is going to love much. I love him a whole lot because he saved me from a whole lot of sin. But I'm glad that when I called on the name of the Lord... I was saved and my sins were forgiven and I was cleansed by that precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh My grace is sufficient for you. The blood of my son cleanses. It changes lives. There's still power in the blood of my son, saith the Lord. Through the blood, your life can be turned around. Through the blood of my son, your sins can be washed away. I have the power to change your life, saith the Lord. I have the power to cleanse you, to change you, to turn you into a new person. Through the blood of my son, it still cleanses all sin, saith the Lord. Lift up your hands and honor the Holy Ghost tonight. I want you to praise him tonight and thank him. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I want you to praise him for the blessings of the blood. You know what you were before you got saved. You know what kind of sin you was involved in. You know what had a hold of your life. But just look at what the Lord has done. Look at the change it has made in you. Look at the forgiveness we found at the feet of Jesus. 
Look at the cleansing that happened uh, when you accepted Jesus into your heart and life. Uh, maybe you don't have a, maybe your past was not so wicked. Uh, maybe your past, maybe you were a good moral person, uh, but you're still bound for the same hell. Uh, amen. Couldn't get out of that. Couldn't escape that uh, except for this precious blood. Uh, I'm telling you, if you've had the blood applied, uh, you are blessed. You are blessed. Uh, you are blessed. We've been blessed uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. My God, Woo! we have been blessed, so blessed by the blood of Jesus Christ. No matter how unrighteous they may be, no matter how vile and wretched they may be, no matter what they've done, where they are, what they're involved in, the blood of Jesus still cleanses from all sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Under the old economy, when an individual left that temple after presenting his or her sacrifice, they left the same way as before they arrived. There was no change there. That sacrifice would have to be repeated again and again. And again, that blood of that sacrifice served only to cover their sins. You know, people still, people still do that today in the church. They go to church and they go through their religious rituals. Never being cleansed by the blood, never being redeemed by the blood. They just go through the rituals of religion and they leave the same way they came. No change. They came lost and they leave lost. But through the blood of Jesus, when somebody meets this Savior, when somebody is born again, when they're washed in the precious blood of the Lamb, there is an amazing change that takes place in that life. The Apostle Paul said, Oh, things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When Jesus washes our sins away, He changes our desires. He changes the way that I think. He changes the way that I walk. He changes my mind. He changes my heart. He brings me out of darkness. Now I can see light. And I'm going to walk in that light by the grace of God. Now you want to live right. You say you got saved. You don't want to live right. You don't want to live for Jesus. You didn't, get, you didn't get washed in this blood. This blood will make you want to live right. This blood will make you thankful and appreciative. This blood will cause you to realize how blessed we really are. That, that, uh, that God would send his only begotten son to die on a cross, to die in my place, to die in your place, to shed his blood so that I don't have to live a life in bondage to sin. I don't have to be a servant to the devil. Uh, every one of us have a past. Uh, amen. Most of us wouldn't want to get up here and talk about some things we did in sin. I certainly wouldn't want to tell you everything I did in sin. Uh, but listen to me. Every time that old adversary comes and wants to point his beady finger at my face and tell me of what I was and how I lived, uh, I can always take him back to the place where Jesus saved my soul, uh, where Jesus forgave me, uh, where I was justified in the eyes of God. Uh, and and now I'm a child of the king. Lord God, have mercy. How can it get any better huh, than this to know huh, that my name's in heaven, huh, that I belong to God. Huh, he is my father and I am his son. Huh, and one day soon huh, he's going to come for me huh, and call me out of this old world huh, and call me home. Huh, I'm in this world, huh, but not of this world. Huh, I'm like Brother Abraham. Huh, I'm looking for a city that has foundation, huh, who's built and maker is God uh, and one day heaven uh, is going to be our eternal home uh, all because of the blood of Jesus Christ somebody give him praise tonight hallelujah to God oh my blessed Lord if Jesus never does anything else for me if he never answers another prayer I'm the most blessed person living on planet earth because my sins have been forgiven. My sins have been washed away. Now, I'm not of the, I'm not of the belief that when he saved me, it's for my past sins, my present sins, and all my future sins. No, no. If you sin, you've got to repent. 
You can't just say, I got saved and all my sins forever is going to be forgiven now. They will be if you repent, if you sin against God. Anybody here ever messed up and had to repent? If you don't raise your hands, you need to come down here and repent right now for lying. In a person in this house, in a person on planet earth that, that's serving God, that has it messed up somewhere. I'm not talking about going out and blatantly. I'm, I'm not talking about that. Maybe you, maybe you did that. Maybe you fell away from God, but you got back to God. Thank God that you did. But you can sin against God by many different things other than what most people think. You ain't got to go out and get drunk to sin against God. You don't have to go out and get drunk, do drugs, get high on drugs to sin against God. The Bible says whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Well, that brings it in tight, don't it? Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And those that are not in the those in their flesh cannot please God. So I have to make sure daily I choose to walk with God. And daily I let the Lord take hold of the reins of my heart and let the Spirit of God lead me and guide me. Direct my paths and walk in those paths. If I get in my flesh, I'm going to get it under the blood quickly. I'm going to make sure his head's lopped off and back in the ground where he's supposed to be uh, and make sure he stays there. Can you say amen? Uh, the blood of Jesus, it does cleanse us and forgive us. Uh, if I've messed up, if you've messed up since you've been saved, uh, I'm glad God's not sitting up there like some kind of a mean judge uh, waiting to kill everything that you know that wrongs him. Uh, I'm glad if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us uh, of our sins and cleanse us uh, of all unrighteousness. Uh, if you're here in this house tonight, if you're watching online, uh, if you sinned against God, uh, you need to get in these orders, repent of it, uh, get it under the blood, uh, let the Lord cleanse you and wash you tonight, uh, and get up and go out of here with your feet like hinds feet, uh, light like a feather, uh, and keep on living living for Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. No matter what they've done, where they've been, you can rest on that promise. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. He doesn't just cover our sins. His blood cleanses us from all sins, never to be remembered against me again. My past, some of my past sins I wouldn't want to brag about. I wouldn't brag about. But I'm glad they're gone. They're not remembered against me anymore. Can you see, man? I read the story in closing. Sister, come on, get ready to play. Everybody stand, please. I want to close with this story I read. Martin Luther, the great reformer of the 1500s, once had a dream in which he stood before God in the day of judgment. Satan stood there to accuse him. And when the books were opened, Satan pointed to transgression after transgression of which Luther was guilty. Luther's heart sank in despair. Then he remembered the cross and turning upon the devil, he said, There's one entry which thou hast not made, Satan. What is that? asked the devil. It is this, answered Luther, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. No matter what you've done, what your past is, the blood cleanses us from all of our sins. Can you give him a hand of praise tonight in Thanksgiving? <laughs> We're blessed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I won't ever head bow, never eye closed tonight. I want to give you an invitation this evening. If you're here, and you say, Brother Shelton, I've got sin in my heart. Things I need to make right with God tonight. I don't want to leave this, this house of God tonight the way I came. I want to leave here different. I don't, know, I don't know your hearts. I'm not your judge. I'm just a preacher here. I'm telling you what this book says. No matter what it may be, Jesus can cleanse you and forgive you tonight. We had two men come down these altars this morning and ask the Lord to do just that, to cleanse them from their sins. Heaven's been rejoicing ever since over those two men. I've been rejoicing. The church has been rejoicing. 
Maybe you're here tonight and you need the Lord to cleanse you. Maybe you failed him. Maybe you've messed up. Maybe you've let him down along the way. Maybe you don't know him. Maybe you're a sinner. Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you've been saved and you're living in a backslidden condition now. You say, Brother Shelton, I want to make right with God. I want to invite you to come to this altar tonight. We want to pray with you. We want to embarrass you. We won't humiliate you. There's nobody in this church that's saved that could do that because we've all been where you are. We all had to make our way to an altar somewhere. Fall on our face before God, broken, and ask Him to forgive us of our sins and to come into our heart to save us, to cleanse us, to forgive us. And he did. Thank God that he did. Anybody here tonight, you need to come and pray and you need to get some things under the blood. We're going to wait just a few minutes. Would you come, please? Would you come? My heart's prayer tonight is that everybody in this house is ready for heaven. If we were to, the trumpet were to sound now, there wouldn't be a person left in this building. But if you're not ready for heaven, you need to make your way to this altar. Get, your, get what you need from Jesus tonight. Let Jesus help you. If you're lost, He'll redeem you. You don't have to go on living in sin. Oh, thank God. Sin's worse than the, than the worst form of cancer in this world. Sin just steals and just eats away at that life, destroying everything good. Until finally there's nothing left. A wasted life that drops off into hell when they breathe their last breath. But God sent His Son to save us from sin, to save us from hell. I'm glad Jesus is preached in this church. I'm glad Jesus is taught in this church. I'm glad we sing about Jesus. I'm glad when we say His name, I, I see some of you, something lights up in you. Because you know the life that He saved you from. You know the change that He's made in you. You know that you couldn't have made that change yourself. It had to be something divine. And so He did. He made that change in you. Would you come tonight? Anybody in this house? I've got some things or... Need to be forgiven tonight. Need to be washed away tonight. Need to rededicate myself to Him. Would you come, please? Would you come? We hadn't preached just to make you shout. I appreciate the way you've responded, but we've preached to get to this place right here, right now. To this altar call, this altar invitation, where your whole your whole future can be changed. Your whole life can be changed. Your whole eternity can be changed right here tonight. That's the miracle of God's saving power. That's the miracle of God's saving grace. That's the miracle of the blood of this precious Lamb of God that was shed for the saving of my soul. If you're here tonight and you have a need, Specific needs, things that you that are bigger than you, things that are beyond your power and your control. You want to come around this altar and talk to God tonight. You know that's that's the best place to be. I, I know when you say that to the carnal man, they think, "What is he talking about?" But the best place to be is where things are bigger than we are. 
Because as long as we think we can work it out, we'll try. As long as we think we can fix it, we'll try to fix it. But when we get to the place where we say, this thing's bigger than I am, I, I can't do anything here. If it's gonna if it's gonna happen, it's gonna have to be God. That's the best place to be, Brother James. Because God's the one that can do something about every situation in our life. I've faced a whole lot of things much bigger than I was, but I ain't never met anything bigger than the God that I serve. I want you to pray for lost loved ones tonight. We want to pray for Israel. I hope you've already been doing that. I hope you were already doing that before this, this terrorist attack happened. I hope you were already praying for Jerusalem daily. Those are God's people. And they are never not going to be a people again, I can assure you. God's got a plan for Israel. And we better stay on the right side of Israel. We better pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for God to keep them and to help them. Father, I thank you this evening for the privilege of preaching. All these years of carrying this gospel, I still feel that heavy burden, God, that weighty burden. I want to preach the Word of God. I want people to be gotten by the Word. I want people to be changed by the Word. I want blinded eyes to be opened to spiritual truth through the preaching of the Word of God. Souls to be saved, lives to be changed. People help through the preaching of the Word. I pray over this, this precious people tonight, God. Every person in this house has a soul, a living soul. That makes them precious. I pray, God, for every need here among these, these people of God tonight. I pray daily, multiple times a day, for their lost family members to be saved. I pray daily, multiple times a day, for their sick bodies to be healed. Pray daily, God, that you would bless them and keep them. Bless them when they come in. Bless them when they go out. Make them the head and not the tail. Bless them spiritually and physically and financially and emotionally. I pray daily, God, that you'll keep them and help them. And Sister Shelton always says, we just want to go to heaven together. We want to make heaven our home. I pray for the needs in this congregation tonight. Everybody in this house is facing something. There's not one person in this house that's not dealing with something. I pray you'll help them tonight. Let them be encouraged. Wrap your arms of love around us. Help us to cast our cares upon you. You said, for you do care for us. I pray, Lord, let that blood just cleanse all of us afresh and anew tonight. Cleanse our heart, our minds, our souls, our spirits, our bodies.